All right, Zombie versus Volkanovski. Guys, much bigger than the fight. Is what was it like to be in Volkanovski's shoes? Because I will submit for you, this was going to be, from a mental challenge, one of the biggest that Volkanovski's ever had, and it's going to be very hard to duplicate. For Volkanovski to go out there and be as dominant as he was, make sure you understand. That's the physicality. I mean, the guy's a physical guy. He used to weigh 96 kilograms. He used to do pro rugby. He didn't even come close to losing a fight before. Not even close. I believe the official rankings have him number two in the world with Kamara on top. That's changed a couple of times where they put him as low as four. He's on the cusp of being the greatest featherweight to have ever done it. If he's not real careful, and I mean real quick, in the next fight, two at the most, he is going to be recognized as the greatest featherweight to have ever done it. Look at what he was up against. Think about this from his perspective. You're a seven to one favorite. No matter what you do tonight, you're not going to get a pat on the back. The number one reason a fighter fights is not for that belt. Number two is not for the money. It's for a pat on the back. These grown men that you're watching on TV were little boys at one time when they walked in the practice room and they would do some crazy stuff in one day to have a coach pat them on the back on their way out the door and they would come back tomorrow to get that same pat. He's given that up. You're a seven to one favorite. You're not getting that. Anything that goes wrong in that fight, you lose one sequence, you lose one exchange, you get lit up on your feet and you got to force it into a takedown, even if you win the round, that is what's going to be remembered. Hard spot. Fair enough. Champion of the world. Things like this are going to happen. But a 7-1 to favorite over a replacement fighter. Hard spot to be in now. You're the biggest fight of the night, and you're not the most sought-after fight. Hard spot to be in, and that doesn't take anything away from Volkanovski. Just Volkanovski and Max is the one where we promised something happened. It didn't come through. I mean, it's just the reality. You insert Shemaev and Burns, and all of a sudden, you get passed up. You're the final guy to walk through the curtain, which by proxy says you must be the most popular, and your reception is not as loud as the guy who fought two fights before you. You plan to go on and put on a show. You still have aspirations of being fight of the night. But the fight that was two fights before that you were in the back and you watched on the monitor is the greatest fight that you've ever seen. What do you do? What is your motivation? And guys go out there all the time. Every upset in combat sports history felt like what Volkanovsky was walking into tonight. And I mean all of them. But it's not the opponent in this case, Korean Zombie, that needs to overperform or fight outside of his gloves. It's the champion, in this case, Volkanovsky, has to lower himself. And every upset that you've ever seen, that's what happened. Because they were such a big favorite. Because they were an underdog. Because they thought, this is the chance to show off my new set of skills. This is the chance to have my hands down and show my chin as I roll my shoulders because I saw Roy Jones do that back when I was a sophomore in high school. It's very real. Not teasing people. This is what happens. It's very tough. Volkanovsky, we all know, is as tough as an old leather boot. We know that physically. But these mental challenges come up all the time, and you get confronted with something different. When you have something different, oftentimes you do something different. I really want you guys to appreciate this. I don't want him to not get his pat on the back. I don't want him not told good job. I don't know how you move the son of a bitch in the rankings. I don't know how you put, you put a guy higher than champion. I don't know. But something special happened for us tonight. This was a speed issue, guys. You take a guy that was 96 kilograms, you cut him down to 145 pounds, you're probably going to expect some strength. Sure. Were you guys surprised by the speed? Never thought of Volkanovski as slow. But you don't get a muscle shark that gets to be the fastest guy in the room as well. Like the magic wand that gets waved over you at birth known as DNA. Nobody gets both. You're going to be the strongest guy and you're going to be the fastest guy. It was remarkable how quick it was. And that was a big problem for the zombie. If you're reactive, if your speed is not quick enough to protect you defensively, you're screwed in the offense. Don't even bring that up. If you're not quick when he's got to come and extend and he's got to show you something before he goes and all you have to do is barely move and it's not fast enough, you're not going to go out and touch this guy. It's just a very tough spot. And Zombie did what Zombie does, which is he looked tougher than hell. He took shots that none of the rest of us 
could have taken. He walked through them and he tried to win. Zombie's way out of this fight was not the conclusion of the fight. His way out of the fight was with 10 seconds left in the previous round when he was on bottom. And instead of saying, staying there or covering or throwing in the towel, having your tag team partner notice the referee step in and call this a TKO, he starts rolling. He starts looking for sweeps. He, try, he kept trying to survive. He represented himself very well. There was a, different an ath a difference in athlete. And what do you do with somebody as good as Volkanovsky? Look, I, you've really got one option in all fairness as I see it, which is you go back to Max. Now that can change very quickly. The landscape changes very quickly. But after seeing what we saw, there is now a responsibility in booking the son of a bitch. You can't just put him in there with someone, even if it's the number three guy in the world, even if it's the number six guy in the world. Straight up badasses. You can't do it. It's irresponsible. He'll hurt them. The Korean zombie, the number one contender, is in an emergency room right now. I mean, in all fairness, this gets real serious at some point. That is where Volkanovsky's skills are at, guys. Volkanovsky is at that John Jones-esque in terms of dominance. John Jones, if you put him in there with a top 10 guy and think that's good enough, will send him to the emergency room. It's very bad, right? I mean, this is tough stuff, but this is how good that he looked. I can't see anybody but Max. You can change my mind. That's up to you, boys. Cater can make an argument and isn't afraid of anybody. That's between them. I'm just not seeing it right now. As we start to look forward, it looks like the marching orders are very clear. It looks like you better get Max better. You better send him to training camp and see what goes out and happens. Because Volkanovsky was up against it tonight. Physically, he's already passed the test. Mentally, this was a unique challenge. It was a very unique challenge and a very dominant performance on a placement of the card. Very hard to follow an act like what Shemayev did. It's very hard. Very hard to follow a world title fight that was as close as Jean and Sterling. It's very hard. It's just a reality. Guys, he passed this test with flying colors. He, at a minimum, gets a pat on the back. 